So when we look at an amplifier on an integrated circuit, we look at an ideal current source. This is actually the best possible load that we could have. And the reason is it presents an infinite impedance regardless of the voltage across it. So if I look at the voltage gain for this amplifier, we just have the resistance of the output of the drain to source resistance of the transistor. So we can say that the voltage gain here is equal to minus GM times RO, the transistor. In other words, it's the same as the intrinsic voltage gain. So if we could find an ideal current source, it would give us the maximum possible gain from the transistor. Now we note that a transistor in saturation looks like a non-ideal current source. So we have a couple of different ways to get a transistor into saturation so that it looks like a current source and that could load this NMOS transistor. So one way is to use a diode connected transistor. Here we have a diode connected NMOS. And another way would be to use a PMOS as a current source. So here we would need some DC bias for the gate of this PMOS transistor. And so what we need to figure out is what are the loading implications of these two structures. Now we know that GM is the same. GM is just the GM of the bottom device, but our load is quite different. So if I look into the load of this transistor, or the sorry, the source of this transistor, this NMOS diode connected transistor, I can see that my R load is going to be one over GM. I'm going to label this M2 and this M1 to avoid uh, confusion. So we're going to have a load of 1 over GM2 in parallel with RO1. And if I look at my total voltage gain, then it would be minus GM1 I'm going to assume that GM2 is much, much smaller than RO1. So we can say that the gain is minus GM1 over GM2, approximately. Now, if I instead look at the PMOS current source, the load is RO in and parallel with RO. In other words, the output resistance of the PMOS transistor in parallel with the output resistance of the NMOS transistor. And then my voltage gain is minus GM1 times RO in in parallel with RO. Now, if I look at these two, it's fairly obvious that the PMOS load is going to give us the highest gain because our output resistance of a MOSFET is much higher than a 1 over GM for a MOSFET. And we're going to derive the exact gain expressions in the next video.